Hi, good afternoon. In today's lecture, I'm going to go ahead and begin with statistics. And the first topic that I'm going to start with in statistics is going to be probability. We are going to go step by step. So I'm going to begin with the basics of probability for today. What is a set? How do we connect sets to probability? And then slowly we pull off this thing to talk about distributions in probability. We will see what are the various distributions, normal distribution, binomial, etc, etc. We will try and link each of that back here and we will see how different distributions play a role. Once you understand normal distribution in particular, you will see that it makes much more sense for you to go ahead and understand back econometrics where we were talking about various assumptions of the CLRM model and talking about what is the normal distribution. So to begin with, let's understand what is an experiment. See, an experiment is any activity that involves uncertainty or that involves randomness. For example, if I talk about maybe tossing a coin, then it can lead to head or tail. Because there is uncertainty in what I'm going to achieve, whether I'm going to achieve heads or I'm going to achieve tail, therefore it becomes an experiment. Similarly, let's say that I have to cross a road and that road can have red light, green light, orange light, etc. So that again, uh, yellow light, etc. That becomes an experiment. So anything that is subject to uncertainty or randomness is called an experiment. Now, you know, to give you examples, tossing a coin once or several times, selecting card from a deck, you know, throwing a dice, raining, not raining, all of these are experiments. Now we want to go ahead and understand what is a sample space. A sample space is all possible outcomes of an experiment. So for example, when I throw or toss a coin, I can only get head or tails. That becomes my sample space. When I talk about throwing a dice, I can get one, two, three, four, five, six. That becomes my sample space. So sample space, to be precise of an experiment, it is denoted by S. And it is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. All the possible outcomes. I would be going ahead and contrasting a sample space with an event very soon. But first of all, understand what is a sample space. A sample space is a bigger thing. It's a bigger set. It consists of all possible outcomes of an experiment. So for example, when you toss a coin, sample space is head or tail. When you toss two coins, sample spaces that both will be head, both will be tail, first head, second tail, second uh, tail, first head, uh, sorry, first tail, second head. So again, this is the sample space. All possible outcomes is called a sample space. Let's see this. So take example one. I'm running an experiment. My experiment is to check whether the bulb is defective or not. And to run that experiment, I need to formulate a sample space. And my sample space has two things. Either my bulb would be defective or my bulb would not be defective. So I get two possible outcomes out of it, not defective and defective. Because I have listed all possible outcomes, Therefore, that becomes a sample space. Let's take one more example. 
So, you know, my example is that the experiment is observing gender of the next child that is born in hospital. Again, my sample space is going to consist of all possible outcomes, male, female. So when I give all possible outcomes of an experiment, that becomes my sample space. Now, let's take one more example. Consider three fuels in a sequence and note the result of each of it. So each of the fuels, each fuels can either be de defective or it can be non-defective. But I have to check for the three fuses together. So, you know, I pick up the first fuse, it can be defective or not defective. I pick up the second fuse, it can be defective or not defective. I pick up the third fuse, it can be defective or not defective. So, how many such possible outcomes are there? Now, let's see this. Either all the three fuses are defective or the first two are defective, uh, sorry, not defective or first two are not defective, but third is defective. First defective, second two not defective, all three defective and so on. So in total, there can be eight possible outcomes. And how do I know that? I know that because I have to fill three spaces. For the first fuse, for the second fuse, and for the third fuse. The first fuse can take two possible outcomes, defective or not defective. So there are two possibilities here. The second fuse can also take two possible outcomes. The third fuse can also take two possible outcomes. So based on that, I can have eight possible outcomes. The first can turn out to be defective or not defective. The second can turn out to be defective or not defective. So for the first being defective or not defective, I have to check all permutation. When the first is defective, second can be defective or not defective. When the first is not defective, second can be not defective or defective. Similarly, for the third one also, I have to check all possible outcomes, right? So when I make all such outcomes, for example, in all these cases, the third one is defective. And then the third one in the next four cases, I have to say is not defective, taking the first two asses. So when I take all possible outcomes, that becomes my sample space. Now, let's take one more example. Two gas stations are located at certain intersection. Each has six gas pumps. Experiment. Number of pumps in use in each gas station. So imagine this. I have two gas stations. One is here and one is here. This gas station has six gas pumps. This gas station also has six gas pumps. My experiment is to check how many of these gas pumps are working on any particular day. So it's possible that zero gas pump is working. It is a possibility that one gas pump is working. Two gas pumps are working, three, four, five, or six. Similarly, for this case, it is a possibility that none is working, one is working, two, three, four, five, and six. So, how many such possible outcomes? Well, let's go ahead and check. For the first gas pump, I can have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here also I can have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? So here I can have 0 gas pump for the first one and 0 gas pump working in the second one. 0 gas pump of the first one, but 1 gas pump of the second one. 0 gas pump of the first one, but 2 gas pumps of the second one. 
and so on. You can fill this off. Here I will have six gas pumps working for both of them. So this is my sample space. How many such possible outcomes? So the first gas pump can have seven possible outcomes. Zero gas station working, one gas station, two, three, four, five, six. And the second one can also have seven possible outcomes. So in total, I can have 49 outcomes. Okay. This all, all this is my sample space. So if you go here and check, this entire is your sample space. Now, experiment is running a C++ program. And, you know, what, what's the catch here? What have they given in the question? They have given that either the program will run in first go. It will be successful. Or it may not run in the first run. But once you run it second time, it runs successfully. Or it may not run in the first time, second time. It may run successfully in the third time and so on. So in this case, if you ask me, what is the sample space? The sample space looks something like this. That, and you stop. The moment the program runs, you have achieved success. You have written the code correctly. So you don't have to progress further. So, you know, your sample space will be that you achieve success in the very first time. Or you go ahead and you have a failure in the first time followed by success in the second time or failure in first two times, then success and so on. So this entirely becomes your sample space. Okay. Now, let's define the next thing, which is known as an event. Now, please understand. A sample space is all possible outcomes. An event is only few of those possible outcomes depending on what you desire. For example, if I tell you that, you know, let's go back to the basic thing. This is my sample space that it can be male or female. My event can be that the gender of child is female. So the possible result of this event would be similarly, my event could be that the gender of child is male. So in that case, the possible outcome is this. So what is an event? An event is a subset of the set, uh, of the experiment. Okay. Even, um, or sample space, to be precise. So event is a subset of the sample space. Sample space is everything. Event is smaller than that. So for example, here, my event can be that the number of gas stations, sorry, gas pumps, not station, the number of gas pumps working in each gas station are same. So I'm asking that out of the total sample space that you just built, which are those cases where the gas pumps working in the two gas stations are the same? 